My first reaction was a really natural one. It was to be really struck by the, by the deprivation and the pain of the place, um, by the images like this one. Uh, now just imagine for a moment that you're the parents of a young girl like this. And you know, you're living in an area that's smaller than your average bedroom, your entire family. The noises never stop. They never stop because it's just so dense. And right outside your doorstep is something that could, that could not only make your daughter sick, but also endanger her life. Well, I think it's natural in, in, in circumstances like these to, to feel pity and to really feel a little bit overwhelmed by the conditions. And I certainly felt like that in the early days. Still do in some respects. But I started talking with young people who are my age and uh, having some real conversations. And what I realized pretty shortly was that they weren't looking for pity, many of them. Um, and they sort of taught me something, something fundamental, uh, something that came to form the ethos of the organization that we created together. And that is that talent is universal, but opportunity is not. You know, talent's universal, but opportunity is not. And this really struck me most profoundly with one of my neighbors. I'd like to tell you a little bit about her. This is Tabitha. Um, she was 34 when I first met her, widow with three kids. And she was living in a 10 by 10 near where I was staying. And towards the end of the summer, she confronted me. She said, you know, you're asking all of these kids about their problems. I got problems too. And you never bother to ask me about my life, so sit down. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my life. I said, OK, mama. And I sat down. And I, and I listened. And she told me that she had been a nurse but lost her job two years previously, and that she was just barely holding on. And towards the end of the conversation, she proposed a solution. She said, give me 2,000 shillings, which is about $26. Now, I've made a habit of not giving out money in Kibera, in part for my own safety, in part because I just didn't know where to begin. Um, so I asked her what she was planning to do with it, and she said, well, I'm going to buy veggies. I'm going to buy vegetables here in Kibera. I'm going to sell them across town in Eastleigh, a Somali community where I can undercut the competition, and they don't crack down on hawkers for not having licenses. And oh, by the way, those licenses cost 5,000 shillings. So she said, invest in me once again. And you know, she had a plan. She knew the microeconomics. She had a plan. There was conviction in her voice, and you know, what the heck? It was just 26 bucks. So I handed Tabitha the funds. I handed her the funds, and I handed her something else. It was a, a conga. And congas are, are brightly colored sheets with Swahili aphorisms. And this is for an excerpt from the summer of 2000. At that moment, I was 20 years old. Tabitha refolded the conga with great care reminding me of my military color guard detail in college, when we slowly lowered our flag and folded it into a tight triangle for the night's watch. It was a good day, and I admired Tabitha. I doubted that I could live with such strength and dignity if I found myself in Kibera alone with no job and three children. This is the Tabitha Clinic today. It treats over 40,000 patients a year. It has two medical doctors, Kenyan medical doctors. It all started with $26. $26 in the hands of a remarkable person, working in partnership together with concerned outsiders, taking the long view. This is when talent meets opportunity. This is the power of 26. Thank you.